Anyway, uh, time for this week's panel discussion uh, with our resident expert, Mike King, and our guest for this week, Cameron Slater, who are with us right now. G'day, guys. How are you? It's a bit of a stretch, expert. Well, expert. Yeah. All you can afford, I think, is... <laughs> <laughs> These are our experts. So, Cameron, you're our guest. We'll ask you first. So, beforehand, we had Jermaine out on the street doing 1 to 10. Uh, we had Martin Luther King at 1. We had the KKK at 10. What, what, what's your racism number? Where are you dialing yourself? Oh, people, people say I'm up there with the KKK. What do you uh, say? Everyone's got a little bit of racism in them. Mm. I, I'd go, I'll go around four. Dude, how how can said... I possibly be a racist? I was born in Fiji. My wife's Lebanese. My brother's married to a Filipino. Yeah. My dad's going out with a, a, a Filipino lady. I can't possibly be racist. That makes right? you racist. Any time you have to reference the brown people you know <laughs> makes you racist. The you brown people I know are the biggest racists that I know as well. What proud. about you then, Mike? You, yourself? What, what number are you? I'm 10. You're 10. You're I, 10. I hate Maoris. You? <laughs> I hate Maoris. I like Maldives, you've got but some, I don't like Maoris. You've got some Maldi friends, right, though? Some of my best yeah. friends are Maoris. Yes, they are. Um, How are you going to remember Nathan, you? Nathan, I'll come yeah. round to your house. I've never come round to your house, but I have other people that I have gone yeah, round they to They had house. white yeah. sheets on, didn't they, in Burning Crosses? What, yeah. what about, OK, well, then what about New Zealand? As a New Zealand eight? is an eight. You reckon? Yes, yes. We are definitely an eight on the racist scale. Especially if we, there's Asians involved. But we, you know, we don't to mean to be. So that's part one. What we'll do is we'll get you hold it there. We'll keep you around for part two. This is good. I like this, everybody. Coming up after the break, more of the show that you're currently watching. That's the show. That's Brown Eye. Welcome back to Brown Eye. Kim, what about um, New Zealand and the way that uh, it uses Māori dim? Like, for example, I mean, like, in, say, a tradition, you know, like, um, is it like a culture that sort of gets wheeled out at opportune sort of photo shoot times, do you think? You know, I think the vast majority of New Zealanders actually don't care. And where it is really, like you say, wheeled out is in local government and government. And, boy, it's just, like, unbelievable. I remember a mate of mine was leasing out his building to some, um, you know, Womble outfit that gives people cuddles. No one could go in there until they, you know, waved a few bits of green stuff and threw around some holy water and, and, and you know, did a bit of whaling and stuff like that. But And you're not racist? We do it with Samoan people. We do it with Tongans as well. We, we, we're bending over backwards, but we're ignoring everything else that's around us. And is, is that actually helping the culture? I mean, you might think is of it, a racist. Is it, Mike? Mike. Yeah, yeah. I, absolutely. Uh, we are definitely part of the culture of New Zealand and you're undermining us with your, your talk of whaling as, uh, and, and waving around magic potions, a holy water, which is actually yours. You colonised us and made us think that your spirits, water, so your spirits were better than our spirits, so here's some holy water. Look... Māori in this country have been treated for far too long by, by governments and local governments like a 1950s housewife. Mm. Put on your nice little wee dress, Stay come out, kitchen. do your little dance, greet everyone, and then back to the kitchen. Mm. And it's, you know... And, and, well, where they belong. And, and, and Kiwis find that really hard to swallow that we should be treated equally now. And we went through the same transition with feminism. I mean, just take, for example, uh, Ngāti Whātua feeling put out yeah. because under the treaty they were guaranteed first option on these houses. And suddenly, I was listening to um, Mike, I'm not a racist, Hosking yesterday, who was saying, well, you know, these parties are doing everything right. It's, it's that constant undermining of who we are and, and minimising our value to the country. And let's be fair, without us, no one would want to come here. Is it, is it a thing that you can balance and get right, though, Cam? I mean, is it it's easy not, to do? I don't know. You know, because you look at... Um, at, at I look, I look at the amount of money that's spent, right? And if we look at, at some of the things that have been done recently, you have to say that they're doing really well. Like, I actually really think that Fana Ora is a really good idea because it's outcome-based. Mm -hmm. They're not just pouring billions and billions of dollars into a big pot and hoping there's going to be an outcome. There's actually people that are working uh, at the forefront. Look at this television station. It went through several iterations before we got to where we are now and look at the quality that it's producing. I mean, the Anzac Day stuff when I was in Gallipoli, it was just superb. Mm. You know, the, the production... What side were you fighting on? Well, yeah, well, my great-grandfather left a bit of his leg behind over there, so... Uh, so, so that's the... Um, well, Iwiism, I think, is what Cam was talking yeah, but about. Yeah, remember... Cam, we're, we're running out of time, so Mike, final thoughts here. Iwi and Kiwi are the same thing. Um, it's a silent K. 
Yeah, but what, re what really bugs me is we are constantly pointing out the failings in Māoridom and there have been a lot of financial failings, mismanagement of money, but Pākehā New Zealand are not put under the so same oh, no, microscope no, a lot. Hang on a second. to one a side a lot. No, hang on. You call a West Coaster feral and watch what happens. I've right. never called a West Coast feral. Well, I have. <laughs> <laughs> right, it was it was it was front page news on every TV station, and then I ended up getting death threats and threats against my family because I dared to call these people feral. You know, same thing happened to me when I did that thing to Jeremy Wells. There you go. Exactly the same thing. So yeah. we're we're fair in our racism in New Zealand. We can both equal agree on opportunity that. abusers. Thank you, thank you, Mike. Uh, especially Cameron Slater too. I really appreciate um, you coming in so that Mike could blame you for everything. Oh, it's all right. Everything. You've got to have, you've got to have an arsehole. For, for everything. <laughs> and we got him, as you. Well, look, tonight we've touched on racism and we're hoping that we've given you a chance to think. Now it's your chance to act. So if you see an Arab board your flight, don't assume that they're going to blow it up. That's racist. Don't assume that the Māori driving the flash car is selling pot. He might just be a Mormon. And just because you see a white teenager enter a schoolyard or movie theatre, remember, it doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to shoot the whole place up. Stop being racist, you racists. I'm Nathan Rarity. Thanks for watching. You can continue to be a part of Brown Eye over at Facebook. Catch you next